it just means more, right? It just means more. And this is the last year of the college football playoff as we know it. They'll go to 12 teams next year. Next year, maybe you get three teams in to a pack or to a to a college football playoff with that expanded format. I think it's possible. Heck, I might even say it's likely. But right now, with the way things are shaken out, the question is, do they get two? We'll unpack it right now. Before we do that, though, make sure you're subscribed right here. It's college football. It's only college football. If you're watching this during the live show, we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We're glad to have you here. If you're watching this as a one-off video, we are live three times a week, full hour-long episodes. Okay? Mon or, excuse me. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern. We got content for you Monday through Friday and Saturday and Sunday. So make sure you're dialed in here so you don't miss any of it. But again, we want y'all a part of this. And we want y'all tuned into the live show so we can get after it in the live chat and have a good time, have a back and forth, and really build this community. So thank you in advance for that. So when it comes to the SEC, man, our predictions at the beginning of the year was we would see Bama and Georgia duking it out in Atlanta. Do we still feel that way? Let's unpack it a little bit. Let's start in the SEC East where we think we know something. Again, think is the, is the major word there. We think we know something, so let's find out if we do here these next couple of weeks. I think there's a lot of solid teams in the SEC East. Like solid, I think, is a really fair word to use. Kentucky, I think they're solid. Don't give me this Mark Stoops deal and don't give me what happened against Georgia. I think they're solid. I think we've seen that they're solid over the last couple of weeks. Tennessee, I think they're solid. I think Josh Heupel is one of the best coaches in college football. I think they're playing great defense. I think the defensive line is really making a, a case for themselves this year. Like, I think Tennessee's very solid. Missouri. How about, how about the Tigers, man? How about the good folks in Columbia, Missouri? I think they're a solid football team as well. Went back and forth with LSU. I think Brady Cook deserves some love. Luther Burden frustrated on three. He's getting some Heisman love. Like, Missouri, a solid football team. I think that you can even say South Carolina is sneaky. Sitting at two and three at the time of us being live, but I think they're sneaky too. Thought they played Tennessee tough at times. Didn't make some plays. They've got that governor with what they don't have on the offensive line protecting Spencer Rattler, but I think they're sneaky. I think Florida is a team that you have to take seriously every single week. It's probably a trajectory year for them this coming season or this season right now in terms of what they're going to do on the recruiting trail and kind of setting the course for Billy Napier's time there. But we've seen, I mean, the way they played Tennessee when they were in the swamp, like I think Florida is, is a sneaky team and you got to take them seriously. So the bottom line, the SEC East, for the most part, it's pretty solid. But like, again, let's not overthink this. It's Georgia. You know that. I know that. I think the rest of the conference knows that. I think Kirby Smart knows that. And they have the best coach who I just mentioned. They have the best roster. Those are two things that you can't account for. Like Those are, those are two things that just like, there's no argument to be made there. That's going to give them a chance in every single football game. It's going to help them prepare for every single football game by nature of how they work during the week. Bloody Tuesday is a real thing. The way the iron sharpens iron is a real thing behind closed doors. And for me, I think they will play their best football when, it's com when it comes time. Like when it's time for them to ball out, when it's time for that apex predator to hunt, they will do it. And I think we saw that this past weekend against Kentucky. Because I don't think what we saw last weekend was Kentucky getting exposed in Athens. That was not my feel. I think Kentucky is a good football team. I think we just saw Georgia really have their eyes on the prize and really have a true opponent to, to chase. And you hate the fact that it took a true opponent for Georgia to kind of kick it into gear. But I think that's kind of what we saw. And I think we saw a little bit more kind of a sneak peek, if you will, of what Georgia is really capable of. Now, they have a three-game stretch, Missouri, Ole Miss, and at Tennessee. That will determine what they're going to be. Sitting here today, I feel pretty confident picking Georgia in all three of those games. Now, we will pick those games when they get here, and maybe we'll have a different prediction for you at that point. But right now, what we've seen from Georgia, what they've put on tape, the way they're trending is a very, very key word. The way they're trending from the beginning of the year to this point, it's a, it's a line that looks straight up. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful little graph. If you were to draw it out, it is trending the right direction. Not something we should overlook. So we like Georgia in the East and I think the majority of y'all that are dialed in would like Georgia in the East. Now, in the West, man, it is... <laughs> the West is just like a wonderful abstract painting. You love looking at it. It doesn't really make sense. There's a lot going on there. There's a lot of chaos, but it's beautiful and it comes together to make what we love about college football, right? It's something that you could just show to your friends and say, this is why I love college football. Look at the SEC West. You got Alabama, LSU, Ole Miss really as the three-team race. If we're, if we're being real, that's probably how it's shaken out right now. 
Alabama, they beat Ole Miss. Looked pretty good doing it. Ole Miss beat LSU in a game where there was like next to zero defense being played. We were at Tennessee, South Carolina that day, and we went in at halftime to kind of hit the reset and charge up the phone and get ready for the second half of Tennessee, South Carolina, check in on other games. And it's LSU and Ole Miss well over the over at that point in time. And just, I mean, every single time either team got the ball, you're like, well, they're going to score. JD, there's 30 seconds. They're going to score. Like, that was kind of the way that it felt every single time that either team had the ball. And uh, regardless, it's it's that kind of setup for them. Uh, Ole Miss has a tough road still. At Auburn. No, at Auburn. I didn't say they just play Auburn. I said they play at Auburn, which is a tricky task because of the way Hugh Freeze has coached it, because of the personnel they have. Like, Auburn's going to be a team you got to take seriously, especially at Jordan-Hare. They got a and and I think, is very sneaky. I think they're probably in that conversation in the West if you wanted to stretch to four teams. At Georgia, they got the Egg Bowl. So that's a tough road, which makes me feel a little bit better about having it be between Alabama and between LSU. Now, LSU goes to Alabama November 4th. Both teams have a bye week before that game. And in that game, if we're going to call it the essentially the SEC West championship game, I think it's not unreasonable to, to call it that for the time being, LSU's offense has been unreal. Been unreal. Talk about a quarterback taking the next step and Jaden Daniels and can he throw it deep and can he take that next step? Jaden Daniels said, I see your next step. I'll raise you like three or four steps. Like Jaden Daniels is getting Heisman love and he should be getting Heisman love because of the way he's elevated his game. Now, the unfortunate reality for the good folks in Baton Rouge is that defense looks unrecognizable. Like we've come to know LSU's defense as imposing their will and physical and fast and formidable and, and a lot of other alliterations. But for, for LSU, man, like that defense is not something that it looks like it's going to get fixed anytime soon, especially on the back end. I like what they have in the front seven. If they can apply some pressure, maybe this conversation becomes a little bit different. But you give Nick Saban a week before. I understand Brian Kelly has the week as well. But with the personnel that Alabama has, and again, the way that they're trending, I think they're starting to play their best football. I think they're starting to put it together a little bit. I like Alabama to hit their stride right now. And I like them to end up playing in that title game. So what we had before the season still holds. We have Alabama and we have Georgia in Atlanta, December 2nd. Do they get two teams in? We'll talk about that here in the next live segment. But I think I see more ways for Georgia to win that game over Alabama than I do for Alabama. I think Alabama is going to, again, find their stride, become more multiple offensively. But like Carson Beck, I think at that point, will no longer be considered a first-year starter. Like at that point, I think he's got the experience you would you would want him to have going into that game. Like I think he's got the confidence you would want him to have going into that game. And I think Georgia, we talk about teams hitting their stride. We talk about Bama hitting their stride. I think Georgia at that point just brings more to the table and can beat Alabama in that game. So again, if this happens, we'll predict it. We'll give you our pick for the conference title game and we'll kind of hit the reset button there. But as we sit here going into week seven, halfway through the season, we still like Georgia to beat Alabama in the SEC title game in Atlanta on December 2nd. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.